Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 217. That is Jeff the Fu Funeral Commander Harbison. I am Ryan Thogmartin and Jeff we are actually only like 20 minutes apart right now. The time schedule doesn't allow us to be together physically but we are actually in the same state just hop skip and a jump from each other. Yeah, it's uh, for you a drive, you know, for me, it's a pitching wedge. I mean, we're just not that far uh, apart right now. But welcome to sunny Arizona. Uh, thank you. I think you said you and your family enjoy it out here. We're we this do. week, as we saw on the uh, waste management open last week, it's just another fantastic people say, why do you live there? Can you put up with the heat? Yeah, I can live with it. It's, it's not that bad. But anyway, so we have a lot to talk about today. And uh, in fact, we'll bring in CNJ in this conversation in just a little bit, because I think uh, with the headlines that uh, I sent you, we've yeah. got where the federal government is looking at providing families through a $2 billion, um, I guess, package up to $7,000 if your loved one died from COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Right at the get-go, what are some of your thoughts about that? I, I think it's a great idea. It's just interesting that um, the last time they had it was during a hur hurricane. So I guess this pandemic, you know, follows along that line. But what are your For thoughts sure. on that? I mean, I think it's a good thing. I think it's beneficial. Um, obviously, with anything with the government, there's going to be some, some red tape. So, I mean, I think that if done properly, um, it, it – could be extremely valuable for families. Uh, obviously, you and I have some questions, but I mean, I think that it said low income families. So, you know, really determining what that means. Um, and then I also wonder, it said up to 7,000. So I'm guessing that you could apply. And if the funeral bill was 3,200, you're not going to get a full $7,000 to cover a, a $3,200 funeral bill. That's correct. And, you know, this lends back to also, um, people are going to die anyhow. So mm -hmm. the life insurance, et cetera, uh, this is, it's good in some respects, but on the other, uh, people should be prepared anyhow, but yeah. we'll kind of leave that to the side. Uh, here, here's a, a thought that I have is, you know, it appears during this process that the families will be paid directly. Um, let's say they get $6,500 for their funeral because they had a $6,500 funeral bill. But the question is going to be, <laughs> in my CNJ and uh, accounts receivable and cash flow expertise, what happens if the family had the funeral, the funeral home let them go without paying? <laughs> you know, Why is would the, the funeral home not get paid before having the funeral? That's my question. My Well, don't question that because that's how I make my living. I mean, I see. if I, if see. I okay. could wave a magic wand you know, and uh, go through the five different ways, or actually more ways you can get paid, Walmart doesn't allow as many ways to get paid as, as we do. But now you're going to see, I bet, some funeral homes saying, well, go ahead and when you get your $7,000, you'll pay us. That ain't going to happen. Right. That's right. Right? You'll That's be talking right. about it next year. <laughs> it's it, it's the age-old question. And then, you know, we go back to the first part of this conversation. Well, we weren't prepared for this. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, we still have bills to pay, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. it, it'll be interesting, A, to find out, you know, how this is going to be administrated. Um, you know, not NFDA, I think you ought to start pushing somewhere in there that that uh, bill, if it hasn't been paid, there needs to be a provision that the funeral home signs off of it, the funeral provider or the cemetery, say, no, we didn't get paid. You pay us. Don't pay the family. Right? So I would, you heard I would it. agree with you. Yeah. You heard it first here on Funeral Nation that um, if you haven't been paid by a family and they're applying for FEMA, um, someone needs to protect you guys there. And oh yeah, by the way, shame on you because you should be paid before you even sign the contract. Um, in fact, that's the whole world right now is that you just can't, we can't afford to let uh, accounts receivables grow because they're not getting any smaller. But anyway, right. if you don't have CNJ, if we haven't talked about this, then let's do so. 
We may be the largest insurance assignment company in the funeral profession, but that doesn't mean we've lost touch with our roots. Here in Rainbow City, Alabama, our priorities still come down to a welcoming smile and a handshake that says we keep our promises. With all the tools and technologies that assure blazing fast turnaround, what really matters is much more old school. Personal responsibility, integrity, relationships, and the pride that comes from hearing yet another client say, you came through for us when it mattered. CNJ eliminates the challenges that funeral homes have in processing insurance death claims. If cash flow is vital to your business, welcome home. But Ryan, uh, my concern also is that the length of time this is going to drag out because of all the yeah. things that our um, government is experiencing now from, you know, uh, trying to get the, the stimulus checks out to other issues and items that are going on right now. But anyway, so, uh, you know, next week I'm, I've got a possibility of very exciting guest. Uh, this lady is going to be at NFDA and uh, I'm going to hold this close to the vest because I don't want um, it to get away. And uh, I think we'll be really excited that she's going to be on our show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we are we are kind of making the Funeral Nation show shorter and shorter, uh, but just bringing some really heavy topics. I know we struck a chord big time uh, a couple of weeks ago when we talked about, is this the baby boomer kind of boom that was supposed to happen 10 years ago? Or are we starting to experience that now? We both have had conversations with some of the biggest brands and vendors in this profession that were completely ill-prepared for this, this death curve. Um, there's still massive, massive amount of just funerals happening, just funeral directors, busy, 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 busy. Uh, I think it's a topic of discussion big time. And I know we hit a chord when we brought it up because You've been contacted multiple times. I've been contacted multiple times. It's like, hey, why are you guys the only ones talking about this? Like, it, it makes the most logical sense because nobody's prepared. If you want to get, you know, this type of certain casket, it's not going to happen. If you need to get a mold to get a vault made or a cart, like, you're not getting the things that you need because they're not available and, and no one was prepared. We did have Carlos from Private Label on. They seemed like they could see kind of a foreshadowing of what was going to happen and, and they've been prepared but you know it's just really interesting of all the things that we have available at our disposal to do to do forecasting and nobody can forecast a pandemic however we're a year into this um i think we could have had better forecasting from a supplier side I, I don't disagree. I, I am still convinced. Uh, yes, we did have additional deaths from COVID, but um, the, it's slowing down, but the death rate is continuing and mm -hmm. is climbing a little bit. So I, I'm convinced that it's the onset of the baby boomers. And, you know, I, I made fun of it back in 2010 and 2011 that the prognosticators were wrong because baby boomers are living longer. You know, they've got medicines well, now we've kind of got to that point of longer. It's getting closer. And I'll, I am convinced of the next 15 years, the business is going to be busier just yep. from the sheer numbers of people dying uh, and coming from that baby boomer generation. But yep. you know, what do we know? We're, we're just... I don't know. We're just two we're talking just, heads. Yeah. We're it, would, it would be great to hear from a preemie company, though, on uh, what they're seeing on the preemie side. Our, our policies like kind of those forward deaths, are they, are they coming and being cashed in prior to, to what was expected? Are people, it has pre-need picked up since the pandemic because it's been more at the forethought and more families have been thrust situations unexpected. Um, so just I, a lot of questions right now. There's a lot of important topics and hopefully Fingers crossed as we move forward through the year with um, hopefully in-person conferences and looking at ICCFA and NFDA, hopefully these are discussions and roundtable topics that are, that are brought to the forefront because we have to have some dialogue around this. We can't just go, ah, it is what it is and try to go about business as usual. Like we've got to be able to make adjustments and, and be able to forecast and, and know what's happening. I hear you. And I, again, uh, 
we had this conversation early on, no one else is having it. And so it'll be interesting when those numbers or that information comes out, whether our prediction or uh, assumptions were true. But uh, in any event, I look forward to uh, seeing you here <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'll, I'll swing by sometime. Just look for an orange convertible and the hair not moving. You'll know that's me. I like, you know, I thought about you today because I read a headline about a lady that used Gorilla Glue as hairspray. And, uh, <laughs> I said, man, I wonder if that's what Jeff uses because your hair is so perfectly positioned that it never moves. So, well uh, done. You know what? Uh, the stuff that I use can freeze scorpions. So, I'll get you again just in case. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate you, man. Um, excited for next week's episode. So, until next time. Have a great effing week. Out of here.